Hey guys, in this set of recordings, we are going to go over how to plot complex numbers. Complex numbers are the sum or difference of a real component and the imaginary component. They are known to be, we describe them to be in the form of A plus B I where A is going to be our real component and the B value is the imaginary component. Whenever we use a plus sign in the description of the structure of something, the standard form of something, that is just by default. It doesn't mean that the A or the B can't be negative. It just means by default the equation or expression or whatever we're using um, just defaults to a plus sign, all right? Now, even though 3 plus 4i is a single number, kind of like plotting a number on a number line when you're a kid, right? Like you're a little kid on your desk in first grade and your teacher gives you a little number line. Um, say, I guess I got a little, yeah, we could do it over here. They give you a little number line on your desk. Maybe they, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And they ask you, you know, put a dot where four is, put a dot where 3.5 is, put a dot where, and you get a little older, maybe they ask you about like the square root of 13. Well, if they ask you to put a dot where square root of 13 is, that's not an ordered pair. They're just adding, asking you to plot a single number. Now the number line that maybe you had taped to your desk in first grade, the number line is essentially an x-axis and then we add that second dimension that y-axis to um, the situation later on so if we're like oh where's the square root of 13 oh no I got to go out to 13 absolutely not let's not be silly the square root of 13 is less than the square root of 16 which is a perfect square but it's greater than the square root of 9 which is also a perfect square so you might go ahead and plot a point somewhere between 3 and 4 you know wherever you choose to put that we're approximating right because square root of nine is three and square root of 16 is four, right? Okay, again, not an ordered pair, not a X coordinate comma Y coordinate going on either what we might call the XY plane or the rectangular coordinate system or the Cartesian coordinate system, whatever name we wanna call it by. However, if we wanna spice things up a bit and, and bring in that second dimension, we would add in a Y axis, which is our second dimension right there. The y-axis, the second dimension, will pass through the x-axis at zero. Obviously, I'm not fitting a lot right here. I'm just kind of sketching a bit for you. So if I wanted to change it up and make it into an ordered pair, well, I could keep that exact same dot, and I would call that square root 13 comma zero. So the square root of 13 is the x value, and the zero is the y value, and it happens to be that same dot over there, right? So... Why, why am I mentioning all of this? Well, when we plot a complex number, right? We are plotting a number like the first one, just like the square root of 13. However, complex numbers have the two components of a real and an imaginary ingredient to it. So we plot it, even though it's just a single number and it's not a coordinate point in ordered pair, we still plot it similar to an ordered pair by indicating both the real in one direction and the imaginary component in another direction. So over here, I have just a little um, axis for us to use. And the way we go about doing an example like this one is we're going to assign our axes to what they're going to be. So this axis that goes horizontally, which we are used to calling our x-axis in a situation, context clues, obviously aware of your surroundings, this is a complex number. In this situation, this won't be referred to as an x-axis, but instead this will be referred to as the real number axis. So let me fit that right there. There we go, okay? Then this vertical axis, which we're used to being our y-axis, instead is going to be the imaginary axis. This is a little bit uh, familiar if we remember the I wheel that we talked about in class. I'm not sure if I recorded that into a video yet. If not, I will um, for anybody who wants access to it in that way. But our imaginary 
will go vertically and our real is horizontal like that. So the A is sort of like our X value. It's going to move our coordinate point from the origin, which is where you would originate. It's going to move our coordinate point or not coordinate point, but our point, our number that we're plotting here in the horizontal direction. If it's positive, it would go right. And if it's negative, it would go left. And then the B value is your imaginary component and that's going to move us vertically up or down. So here we have an example, three plus four I. So your tick marks do not need to be to scale. We don't need to do 8,000 tick marks. I mean, realistically, you could just put one tick mark on each axis as long as it's on the correct positive or negative part of the axis and label it what it is and call it a day. So I'm gonna put a few tick marks. So I got one, two, here's three. I'll go up to four. And then my imaginary, I need it to go up to four. So to make sure I fit it, four I, halfway is two I, halfway is one I, so then there's three I. So four I will be this right there. So where are we going to see this point? It's gonna go right there and that's it. That is the point. Let's just make sure this is um, nice and focused for you guys. And that is the point three plus four I. So you could either label it with three plus four I, or if you wanted to assign a letter to it or something like that, you can call this, you know, point W, whatever you want to call it. And then you go over here and you can label the point with the W. Maybe you have a bunch of points on one um, set of axes, you know, it depends on the situation there. All right. So important things to remember, real axis is horizontal. The imaginary axis is vertical. If the real value A is negative, we would have gone left. And if the imaginary component B were negative, we would have gone down. If they are asking you to plot a complex number, but they only showed you say four I, or they only showed you three, well, then the other component is just zero, not the end of the world. And you just go ahead with that. Um, and important also is your starting point is the origin. We originate there. So that is our zero, is what we are used to seeing as the ordered pair zero, zero on a regular X, Y plane. So really, that's everything we need to know for right now. Hopefully this example is a great starter example and there's going to be other examples following this for, you know, just to add a little bit of variety and practice. So click on that at the end of this video or jump to the playlist of these types of examples. And after this playlist set, we will also get into finding absolute values of complex numbers in a separate playlist or maybe the same one. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. All right, have a great day.